DicePouch.com, premier custom dice bags for the tabletop gamer. Your inner geek wants out. Featured sponsor of Gamer's Table. Hello and welcome to Gamer's Table, a discussion of tabletop role-playing games and other topics related to the gamer subculture. Be warned, this show may contain some explicit material that may not be suitable for all audiences. Hello and welcome to Gamer's Table. My name is Eric. This is Mike. This is Mark. This is Greg. This is Shannon. This is Dave. And I'm Sean. This episode we're going to talk about horror. <laughs> yes, yes, all other <laughs> podcasts do their horror episode in October. We do ours now. <laughs> Mark suggested this topic. Uh, why did you? Sub- uh, because I had uh, I, I remembered that the movie Communion exists, and uh, that that movie basically ruined my childhood. Communion is that is that a religious <laughs> movie or what? Is no, that? you'd think uh, it would be, but it's not. It's about uh, Christopher Walken and. It, yeah, it's based on a true story. It's actually just two hours of people going up to <laughs> commune the body of Christ. Amen. With Christopher Walken. <laughs> With Christopher Walken, he's, he's the, the priest, priest. Which makes things infinitely just frightening. Wow. No. It's stuck the wafer in his ass. It's about a guy named Whitley Strieber who, uh, at his cabin in the, the, the north woods of uh, New York, I believe, he was out there just doing his thing in his cabin and got abducted by aliens. And they came back a lot. His experiences have kind of become the uh, the archetypical abduction scenario. So this was based on an actual like uh, right actual, person, right? Okay. Uh, Christopher Walken is playing Whitley Strieber in the movie. Uh, so being what ten or eleven and having cable in my bedroom, I saw a movie with aliens was on the uh, the little Channel Six guide, and uh, I was like, "Hey, movie with aliens, it's got to be good, right?" Because everything's good science fiction when you're 11. And I watched the movie, and uh, it scared the crap out of me. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and it's had a, a lasting effect on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was afraid of being abducted by aliens for about half my life. I don't think anybody really looks forward to getting abducted. No. I think it's the anal probes that kind of causes that. To- <laughs> Anytime I think about anal probes and alien abduction, I always think about the episode of Supernatural where the uh, – where the what is he? It was, uh, 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 was it the um, Sam and Dean – are out looking uh, in the field for... Um, uh, is it that one? Is, is no, I'm talking about the one at the college where it was the, oh, the, the trickster. It was right. the trickster. It was the trickster. They and made he, me slow dance. <laughs> <laughs> they made you what? Right. <laughs> Segwaying into that kind of a, a genre. You know, games like Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter International, you know, things like that is billed as horror. But is it really horror? It's a dark fantasy... I would say, but I wouldn't necessarily call it horror. I I would attribute more horror to be like the game Chill. I've never played it. I've read the book once or twice. But I think to actually have a game that is horror, you actually have to have players who are going to get involved emotionally enough to be scared at the table. And that's the thing. (laughs) I, I don't think that any game that's branded horror actually evokes that emotion. Unless your game master is just a damn good... So well, sure, absolutely. I mean, it, it does really hinge on, on that. You but. have an evil game master who, like, knows you real... Like, probably something Mike would do, because he's kind of evil. What? Who, like, knows you really what? well and just, like, picks on your insecurities and Mark everything you're scared of. Yeah, he's, he's, take, he's been taking notes this whole time. Right. It's like, I'm I got it all now. up here. Sure you are. Like World of Darkness, you're playing monsters, you're hunting monsters... But there is no real fear. There's no fear of the dark. The only way that you could really do it is if, like you said, there was this emotional investment in the character. There has to be a fear of your character dying. That's why I think horror is best injected into other genres. You know, if if you're playing, a, let's say, D&D game, and you're playing along, and then all of a sudden the game master puts the campaign on its ear and makes turns it into a horror like rips the characters into Ravenloft something, yeah, something like that it's like that you know things well, all the elements are there just ready to be used but we don't tend to think of the vampires in D&D the skeletons in D&D the zombies and other undead in D&D or any of the monsters to be really horror monsters because it's a fantasy setting and that's kind of the thing mm-hmm. unless knowing going in that it's going to be a horror kind of thing, you're you're just probably just going to react to it like it's an action movie. I mean, Monster Hunter International 
it's not officially out yet, but it's going to be. Uh, having read the novels, and uh, we can tell you it's it's not really a horror kind of genre. It's more like an action movie with monsters in it. Right. And that's, I think a lot of movies are like that. That's, that's a huge problem I've actually recently encountered with a few people, you know, when I, you know, I tell them I'm a, I'm a fan of horror movies and they go, Oh, so you like those saw movies and shit like that. And I was like, no, no, that's no, no, that's, 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 that's not thing. horror. That's I, gore. That's gore porn. Gore. Yeah. That's, that's gore. gore. Well, and, and even Torture just pornography. Well, and even if you just go back to, you know, things like, you know, uh, the Hellraiser movies, those, that's gore. That's not, you know, that is a very specific bre- offshoot of horror. But, you know, yeah. horror started long before that when it was just the, the original Universal Monsters was supposed to be horror. Oh, I right. mean, there's so many different it was like Creature branches from the Black of it now. Lagoon. You watch Creature from the Black Lagoon now? I was like, that's a dude to suit. And well, it was like the original House on Haunted Hill. The original House on Haunted Hill, they've shown on the Disney Channel. <laughs> when it was released, you have to sign a paper Stating that if you died in, while watching the movie, your family would not sue the the movie company. Huh, it was that, it was totally a promotional thing. It was yeah. a joke, but still, they were. It was that level of scary as what they were billing it as. And now it's shown to kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Everybody here at this table has seen gore splatter movies and things like that, and we're basically immune to it anymore. Mm-hmm. Whereas back in the 70s when Texas Chainsaw Massacre first came out, people were, you know, really reacting negatively to it. And I just think that in a game, injecting something like that into your game, what's usually the case, what makes something really scary is that you are out of your element and you have no way of destroying that thing. Right. And I think uh, D&D 3.5 had even come out with a <laughs> horror handbook. Uh, adding on ways to inject horror into your game, uh, and some additional things that you could put twists on monsters and account- encounters you could come up to. And, uh, you know, I think in fact the cover had a group of heroes walking through a forest that had things hanging from trees. I think one of them was a severed head or something like that. Right. It was, uh, one of those books that I think I got. I didn't look much into, but I, I think I was even in Germany at the time it came out. It was, it was uh, Heroes of Horror. There you go. Yeah, that's I remember it. that. I think horror could work in a game if, one, you had an excellent storyteller as a DM. Like, you got to be top-notch. Right. And, two, if your players weren't as jaded as, like, all you guys... Like, you guys cannot play a horror game. No, we'd blow it. Yeah. 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 Like, well, you are not... Everybody have to be on the same page. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, like, and also, not. like... <laughs> No one's that invested in their characters. Like, oh God, if, if this person dies fighting this monster, then it's going to be horrible and it's going to be awful. Right. As opposed to save my shit. I'll make another character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like if I remark, I'm going to go smoke and then I'll come back whenever you guys are done and make <laughs> another character. Right. Right. As opposed to like, if you take maybe like kids who are playing it, actually, I think horror would work best as an adult DM playing with kids. <laughs> Oh, wow. You're walking a weird line. line. You're very (laughs) twisted. You realize that. That's a weird line. Did we just scrap this episode? That would work. No, like uh, mom or dad playing with their children. Right. I understand what you're saying. (laughs) You don't have to be as just over the top with a kid. You can scare them with just a boogeyman. I know that Hunter has the slasher source book. And from what I've read of it, it sounds like it's about the closest you can actually come to an actual horror movie in scope because Hmm. slashers are not like anything else that you can try and kill. They have their own thing. I think that would be a lot of fun. We've always joked or, you know, said that we would do a slasher game and do kind of like, uh, the, the campers at camp X or something like that as a uh, camp server. Like I think was Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sleepaway camp. Sleepaway camp. Uh, so what was the dead gentleman one was a dead camper, Lake. dead camper, Lake. (laughs) dead camper, Lake one and two. Oh, I guess I take it back. I think we could play a horror game as a joke. Well, and that, we that's, totally could as a joke. That's, yeah. that's the other thing is even if you have a really good game master and really good players, more times than not, the players are going to be melodramatic instead of being authentic. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking as we're talking about this, the, the staple of your, your typical horror movie is a group of friends or a group of people show up at X location and then one of them or two of them are just cacked. They're just dead. Right. And then the rest of the story is people trying to either escape or figure out what's going on as one or two of them at a time just fucking die. Right. So <laughs> it would be really hard to do that in an ongoing campaign. Like if, we, if we're like, you know, fifth level, a couple months into a game and I'm, 
Mike all of a sudden just kills Dave, I'd be fine with it. But it's not, <laughs> Dave might object. Right. Well, you, you've only, you'll get over yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, you're about dead anyway in our current game. No, this is true. And our last game. And our last game. <laughs> yes, Mark, you hit on something there. It'd have to be a one-off thing. It would have to be a one-off thing, yeah. Uh, a lot of horror movies, I think, what your point is, is that the characters in it are unprepared. And so if you're playing D&D or World of Darkness or whatever, these are all characters that are prepared exactly. for danger. Right. Exactly. So that immediately you know, makes it that much harder to run a story. So if you do a one-off campaign, though, where all your characters have just basic abilities and just throw them right into the, th- into the thresh and go, yeah. let's see what happens. No weapons, nothing. The, yeah. pro- the problem with that would be eventually you would have to start killing characters yes. as a game master. And that means people are going to have to sit out and watch mm. because and they're not going to be involved. If they understand be the that way, at the outset. Yeah, that yeah. would be yeah. a good way of doing horror. Your character's dead, you're out. Yeah. Well, yeah. and if you did it in one sitting, you know, like if you said, we're going to play tonight, we're going to do, you know, five, six hours. Right. One of the guys I gamed with in the army, his group used to do what they called the Halloween scenario. They'd start August, September time frame, and they'd start playing whatever they were playing at the time. And they would build their characters up, culminating in a run on Halloween. The one that I took part in was actually a Resident Evil type scenario. You know, we changed some stuff for kind of trademark, but ultimately that's what it was. And actually, my character and his character were the only ones to survive this particular Halloween run. Most characters died, and ultimately that's what it was. We started out ahead of time, and you move your character through the story, and you end up in a situation, for lack of a better term, say a Raccoon City type situation, where all of a sudden it's nothing but zombies with a timeline where a nuclear weapon is going to land, and you're SOL if you can't find a way out of the city. And it adds an element of not maybe not even horror, but urgency. And yeah. also, you have the whatever to come up with. My question <laughs> would be: Okay, so let's say you're running, you're playing in a, in a thing like that. So when when characters died, they're what dead. Then and, and then the players either just sat around and watched, or what did they do? Um, they could choose. They a lot of them sat around and watched just to see who was going to win. Because at that point, we it was a is a last man standing thing. Who's going to make it? Right. Some left because they were butt hurt. So right. they, they said, well, just call me when you guys are starting another game. Right. And, you know, I'll come back. Sure, sure. I mean, I can understand that. Why, why If you're not playing, then why am I sitting here? The, the other thing I was going to bring up is when you did that, and let's say your character, you know, your character and another character survived, and then you play again, did you play the same character? In a following scenario, because the only two of us survived, it was one where if we wanted to play that, it was one where we would take off on a side game. The next game we played, we would start up new characters, start up a new scenario. Halloween scenarios tend to be almost one-off campaigns, but they tend to run two or three months. Right. Um, you know, those characters, yeah, they make it. And usually if they survive that kind of thing, they don't ever really come back. Right. Uh, we did one in a fantasy genre using the hero system where uh, it was a large orc army situation. And my character ended up getting beaten to death by a city guard. Right. Uh, with actually the flat of a short sword. So it was one of those where I just kind of sat and watched. That campaign ended badly. We didn't make it to Halloween. Everybody died early. But to follow that up, though, is, and then my point being is when you play a horror scenario like that, where you're doing like the, the last man standing or last two standing, and then you try and play that character again, it's almost like a bad sequel. You're almost like, well, how, why is this person in this situation again? Right. Uh, Resident Evil movies. Uh, right. And that's what it, the one situation was. It was basically Resident Evil. And how it kind of came about again, the characters were, if, for those who are not familiar with the Resident Evil storyline, they start with the BSAA, which is basically a government agency used to clean up all the umbrella bioweapons. And our characters got hired into that organization basically for basically walking out of the... That was like your trial, was getting through that, and you proved your worth. Well, actually, by getting through that trial, we were seen as actually being worth something and hired for our experience. Gotcha. Um, You were like Ripley. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good analogy. You you experienced the xenomorph, so then uh, the space marines brought you in as a consultant. (laughs) And then didn't listen to you. Oh, I I, I thought you meant uh, the character's value was because she was impregnated with... Alien Spore. Oh, see, that's a bad sequel. That were, oh. That's another one of the bad sequel right. ideas. I'm not really sure that you could make a long-term horror campaign. It would have to be kind of one-offs and quick yeah. ones. You de- do need the two- or three-month lead-up, though, in a horror campaign, so you can get the emotional investment into your character. That's a really good idea, I think, actually. Rather than just doing a... Uh, 